in the ruins of my once great mind. Ha <laughs> ha. That Inca temple of my Andes, now subsiding. Some memories limp out in misery like the sick in rags. Some roar like raging beasts and will not go away. Others tiptoe silently along the misty cobble streets yesterday. I remember marbles, knuckle bones and hula hoops, grass, snakes and lemon trees, the broken shells of clams, cities, ships and post-war Amsterdam. And then the gables, arts and crafts, for me the house that does not go away. And Grandma, standing by the fountain, a young girl that day. Parts of that old house now rest in mine. The urn, the candlesticks, the chair, the desk. And when I look at them, their past returns, barely tangible. Mind games of time, tricks of the heart. Mysterious and moony was that wistful sitting room where pensive curtains draped onto the floor. A widow, thin of bone and speech, wore black. Her long, ethereal cheeks hung like flash hoods of her sandless grief. Her name was Auntie Frank, and in that somber chair she smiled, the weak smile of a dying heart. To climb the wooden stairs that creaked up to gaunt, empty rooms where Aunt Frank slept. A consummated Christian of godly flesh, she lay in linen sheets, alone in bed, white roses in a vase. Flashbacks and Recollections are dead-eye memories. They pace about our thoughts, mugging the past, devouring us until they drop, gathering like fallen moths with dusty wings upon those mindful gables floors, which are no more. That house is gone. The people are all dead. The garden isn't there. The urn. The table, the candlesticks and chair are survivors of the past and of the house that was but is no more, the house of Auntie Frank.